Happy Wednesday, everybody. Today we're gonna to be talking about problem solving with area. Okay, like I was telling you guys on Monday, area, finding area, calculating area is very applicable in real life situations. Um, yeah, so I know last um, lesson, the rectangles or squares or shapes that we had, had um, grids in it basically, or squares that we were able to count one, two, three, four, five, six, and then put six. However, they're not always gonna look like that. Sometimes they're already gonna give you the measurements on the sides, and then you can still calculate area using that. So you're gonna notice that today in our guided notes, in our independent practice, and on Friday's quiz, sometimes it's gonna have um, like an area model, other times they're already going to give you the measurements. So, if you look at questions one and two on your guided notes right now, we're going to go over that. Okay, so this right here is the length. Okay, this is length. And length is basically just telling you how long something is. On the side, or the shorter side, that's going to be the width. And width tells us how wide something is, okay? So length versus width. Length tells me how long something is, right? I see that the length right here, and they'll give me a number. Let's say that the length in this scenario is gonna be four, or no, no, let's say eight. So our length is eight, centimeters. I'm going to do the same as I think question number three as well. We're going to go through one, two, three, boom, right now. All right, so eight centimeters is our length. And let's say that the width or how wide my rectangle is right now is four centimeters. All right, so length versus width. Sometimes they're going to say, hey, the length is eight centimeters and the width is four centimeters. What's the area of this rectangle? So again, they're not always going to have you count the squares, um, but they'll give you the length and the width. So that's good to know because I am going to be using those words, length and width, length and width. I want you to know that, length and width. Okay, so I can still figure this out. If you remember last week, what did we do when they gave us the sides or when we chose what the sides were, we multiply. So four times eight equals, you should know your math facts like that, four times eight equals 32. And then always, 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 what do I always need to include in my answer? This is one of your questions too, I don't know which ones, but true or false. <laughs> what do I always need to include in my answer? My units. Always need to include your units, okay? Because if I just leave 32, 32 inches squared is different than 32 feet squared, right? So I do need to be specific with, okay, are we talking about feet? Are we talking about inches, centimeters, etc.? In this case, we're talking about centimeters, and we're going to put squared. Centimeters squared, so boop, that's the answer. 32 centimeters squared is my area for this rectangle, and I figured that out by doing four times eight, which was the same thing as um, width times length. Or if you remember our commutative property, I can do length times width as well, okay? I can do four times eight or eight times four. Mufasa. Let's look at this polygon together. And if you remember in geometry, a polygon is a flat shape, right, that has vertices, and it is a closed shape as well. So as you can see, this is a polygon. It has vertices, no curves, it's a 2D shape, and it is closed, meaning it's not open like this right here. That would be an open shape. But all the vertices are connected. Okay, so for this one, this might seem like it's actually harder to find area, and that's true. It is more challenging to find area with irregular shapes like this, However, it is not impossible. We can absolutely still figure out what the area is just by doing some more math, doing some more critical thinking. We are problem solvers, we've got this. So the easiest way to figure out what the area is for these types of polygons or irregular shapes 
is to divide them into quadrilaterals, all right? So if I divide this into two quadrilaterals, let's say this is quadrilateral A, this is quadrilateral B, right? Now, I can find the area for A, which is actually what we're gonna do. I can find the area for A, I can find the area for B, and then I would just add up those two areas. So again, I can divide this irregular shape into two quadrilaterals and then add up the areas for those two. All right, so this is a multi-step problem. In this case, I would do four times eight. All right, so four times eight is 32, and I would put meters squared. And then for B, I would do four, and then I need to figure out what this is right here, how much this is. And I am able to do that. I'm gonna show you real quick. I don't think this is an example for you, but I do still wanna show you how to do this because you are gonna know how to do this, so. All right, so if I wanted to figure out what this question mark is going to be, I notice that this whole side is seven meters. Now, that means this whole side as well would be seven meters. However, I can see that there's a chunk missing, right? And that chunk that's missing is the same height or length that this chunk is. So now all I gotta do is subtract this four. So seven minus four is three meters. So if this is four meters, this chunk right here would be three meters because four plus three is seven, which means that this whole side would be seven, just like this whole side would be seven, right? So that's how I just figured out this question mark would be three meters. And then now I can do, okay, four times three. Let me go back to my black one. So now I would do four times three, that equals 12. Now that I have the areas for figure A and figure B, I just add these two up. So two plus two is four, three plus one is also four, and I would keep meters squared. So that's how I would figure out the area of this irregular shape. So we're gonna go ahead and do an example together now. They're wanting to know the area of the entire garden, right? Now, like we said, we're gonna divide this polygon into two quadrilaterals, right? Remember, a quadrilateral has how many sides? Four sides, so I see one, two, three, four, and then for this section, one, two, three, four, right? So now I have two quadrilaterals. We're gonna find the area of this section, we're gonna find the area of this section, and then we're gonna add those two sections together to find the total area. So let's start off with the area of the carrot section. I see that, remember, all I need is one length and one width, so I have five times five, and we know five times five is five, 10, 15, 20, 25. All right, now for this section, I see we have 10 times six for the lettuce section. So I'm gonna do 10 times six, and 10 times six, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. All right, now I'm gonna do 25 plus 60. And if you do it to the side, I'm gonna line them up. I know that five plus zero equals five. Two plus six equals eight. So my total area is 85 meters squared. This is the area. All right, yep, so I found the area of one section, area of another section, added those two areas up. So big difference right here, don't multiply it again. You multiply, multiply, and then you add. And then you always include your units. All right, the next question after this talks about finding a missing side. So I'm gonna erase the work that we just did. And let's find this missing side. So let's say this is our missing side. If I wanna find this side, I know that this side is gonna be the same length as this side, all right? And they gave us some measurements on this side. So in this case, 
I need to add these two up to know what the total length is going to be. So they gave us six. And then I know that right here is five. So six plus five equals 11. And I know those are in meters. So this missing side is 11 meters. All right, if they give you two measurements that are on the same side, then you add that up in order to find out what the opposite side is. However, if they give you the big side and they only give you one piece of the other side, then instead of adding, what would you have to do? Subtract, okay? Awesome. All right, so you now are ready to do the independent practice. I believe there's one, two, three, four, five questions. So do those five questions. I suggest having a scrap piece of paper next to you so that you're able to do the work. You don't have to show me that you did the work. If you get the correct answer, then I'll know that you did your work correctly. All right. Um, however, I do also suggest continue watching this just so we can brush up on doing two-digit multiplication. If you're set with two-digit multiplication, then go ahead and do the work already. But I do want to go over how to do double-digit multiplication because your independent practice and your quiz on Friday will have that. So let's just go over this quick example. I'm gonna do our two strategies. I'm gonna do, let's do the break it down method first. So if I have 28 times nine, all right, off the top of my head, I don't know 28 times nine. I don't wanna do repeated addition because that's gonna be 28 plus 28 plus 28 plus 28. That's just too much, right? So I'm gonna break down 28. I'm gonna break it down into a 20 and then I'm gonna break it down into an eight. Now the reason why I do that is because 20 plus eight would be 28. So if you notice, I took it from the tens place and I just added a zero, because I made it still the tens place. And then I looked at the ones place and I kept that ones place as a ones place, which is eight. All right, now I need to multiply both of these by well, we're multiplying to an eight by, which is nine. So we're gonna multiply both of these by nine. Now I can do this a lot more easier. So I'm gonna pick another color. Let's look at the green. All right, and now for 20 times nine, what should I cover up? My 20, so I'm gonna cover up my 20 and that shows me two times nine. What's two times nine? I can count by twos or I can do my nines trick. I'm gonna do my nines trick. So if I have my hands up like this, I'm gonna look one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm gonna, oh, not bad. It's nine times two. So I'm gonna put my hands up again. But what I just did would be nine times nine. We're not doing nine times nine, we're doing nine times two. So I'm gonna put one, two. My second finger down, and that's gonna be my ones place, which is one. I mean, that's my tens place. Come on, get yourself together. That's my tens place, which is one. And then everything after that, I'm gonna add up and that's gonna be my ones place. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So two times nine is 18, right? So let's put my second figure down, that's 18. One, eight is 18. And then we have to put our zero back because that's what we covered up. Now I uncover it. 18, put that zero, now it's 180. All right, now if I wanted to, to do eight times nine, I'm gonna put my nine hands up again, and I'm gonna to count to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Put my eighth finger down, and I'm gonna add these up, that's gonna be my tens place, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seventy, two. Seventy, two. All right, now when I do this, I'm gonna line it up. I'm putting my two in the ones place, I'm putting my seven in the tens place. There is nothing in that hundreds place, okay? Make sure that these are nice and lined up. Now I'm gonna add these up. Zero plus two is two, eight plus seven is 15, and then one plus one is two. So 28 times nine is 252. So that's our break it down method, and I'm going to show you our other method with our arrows. And then you guys are good to go and do our independent practice. All right? 
28 times 9. All right. So with my arrows, let's draw our first arrow, which is 9 times 8. I'm going to put my 9 fingers up, put my 8th finger down, and that's 72. So I put my 2 here, and my 7 goes up here, because that's how I read 72. If you put your 2 up here, and then your 7 down here, that's no longer 72, that's 27. Okay, so 9 times 8 is 72, I'm putting my 7 here, my 2 here. Now, my next arrow goes here, 9 times 2. What is 9 times 2? 9 times 2 is 18. And then what do I have to do with this? Add it. So 18 plus 7. Well, we can do 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So boop, 25. And look, we got the same number as before when we did um, our break it down method. So 252. Basically, 28 times 9 equals 252. We confirmed it by doing it twice. All right? Do your independent practice, and I'll see you guys later during our Zoom call. Bye.